What is up guys, it's your girl Charlene FX. Welcome to another YouTube video. So I'm going to be doing a three or four part uh, beginners kind of master class, kind of mini master class on my YouTube channel. I did have my beginners master class not too long ago and I'm going to be hosting another one uh, in a couple of weeks here because the last one, uh, even though it was a good class, uh, we had a couple glitches, a lot of people weren't able to get access to it. So this time around, we're going to kind of revamp it, bring it back out and um, have it in a timely fashion so that as many people as possible can attend. Uh, but on this little mini series I'm going to have on here are some of the questions I've been getting on a few of the one on ones that I've been doing with some uh, some students and some non students. OK, now, although I go over a lot of what I'm going to be going over in this mini series in my course, there's a lot of also very basic and intricate um, fundamentals that a lot of people just aren't getting. It's not clicking for some reason. Um, it's not registering. And I think well, I'm going to try to actually explain it in these videos in a way to help understand better if possible. All right. So this is going to be like a beginner's masterclass for dummies. Okay. And it's not to be offensive towards anybody. It's just um, a way to help you guys understand uh, how to understand certain techniques of how to break down a chart in the most simplest way possible. And as you guys already know, I like to keep things as simple as I possibly can to help you guys, you know, excel in whatever it is you want to do when it comes to trading. All right. So really, really quickly, guys, we're going to go over support and resistance. OK, support and resistance, one of the most basic, basic, basic things of trading. And yet a lot of people still don't get it. It's still hard for them to understand. And maybe if you look, if you see it from a different lens or you have it explained to you in a different way, It'll maybe help to kind of bring it all together so that you can actually, you know, finally understand it and be able to uh, to excel with your trading. So we're going to get into in this video, we're going to talk about basic support and resistance, how to identify certain things, what to look for when you first, first, first get on the charts to help you find a trade setup based off support and resistance. There's plenty of ways to look for trades. Some traders simply trade off support and resistance. Some traders trade off of uh, price action. Some traders trade off of technical analysis. Some traders trade trade off of fundamentals. Some traders put all of that together and trade all of that all together. The 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 main basis of trading is learning all of the little steps and fundamentals all kind of separate, and then finding a way to put it all together so that it can work for you and you can come come up with your own style of how to actually trade the market. So I'm going to be going over support and resistance on this series and the next probably two to three series, maybe four, is going to be touching on different things. These videos are not going to be very long. I'm going to go into, you know, the nitty and the, the nitty gritty, the meat and potatoes of it. And please, I implore you guys to rewatch the videos over and over. Take notes if you must. Go to your own charts, whatever pair you trade implement these things on them to make to see if it's working for you number one and number two to see if it's something that you can actually incorporate into what you're already doing to help you uh become a better trader okay so really quickly before we get into that i also always 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 get the question who's your broker who's your broker who's your broker who do you trade with i trade with hanko trade guys that's who i've been with for the last probably four going on five years now all right MT4, MT5 is pretty much done with, all right? The prop companies are getting booted off of it. A lot of brokers have discontinued using it. Um, so a lot of you that have become used to and accustomed to using MetaTrader, you kind of have to adjust to the way the market is shifting now. And Henkel Trade is now using ActTrader. And if you don't know what ActTrader is, it's another trading platform that, uh, that we use to execute our trades on Henkel Trade. And uh, if you want to see how it's used, just swing on over to one of my live trade videos and you'll be able to see me trade it live and see how simple it is to use. All right, Henkel Trade, not regulated. We also get that question a lot. Are you regulated? Are you regulated? No, it's not a regulated broker. However, it's still a trusted broker of mine who I've been using, like I said, for the last several years now, okay? The type of account that I use is an ECN account. So those of you that are always asking me what kind of account, Charlene, ECN, and my leverage is 500 and I trade US 30, used to trade gold, but I trade US 30 on it. So can you trade indices? Yes, you can trade NAS, you can trade GJ, AU, Forex, pairs, whatever you need on that, um, on this broker. Also, they also have a new Discord group that you can also join to ask questions, to connect with other traders. 
um, talk about ActTrader if you need. So uh, the links to all of that, guys, will be in the description box uh, below. So if you have any questions or comments on that, drop me um, a comment below, and I'll be more than happy to answer that for you. All right. So let's get into uh, support and resistance. Support and resistance, support and resistance, guys. Support and resistance, guys, is the bane of trading. It really is. You cannot trade without knowing what support and resistance is and how they how they correlate with each other and how you actually need both of them to actually trade, okay? When you're looking for a trade setup, guys, support and resistance is gonna be one of two things. It's going to be your stop loss area. It's gonna be your take profit area, okay? It's gonna tell you where to enter a trade and also where to exit a trade depending on what side of the market that you're on, okay? First thing you wanna do when you get on the charts and remember to listen and take notes, guys, okay? Listen and take notes. First thing you do when you get on the charts is you identify a trend. Identify a trend because the trend is going to tell you what direction you're most likely going to take a trade in. So if you're looking at, if we're looking at gold here, and if you struggle with identifying the trend, that's a whole nother issue for a whole nother day. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll talk about that in another, in another series. Maybe I'll add that. I didn't have that plan, but maybe I'll add that in there, but identify the trend. The trend is most likely where the overall market is going. It's not looking at, you know, one section or one area and saying, oh, this market's going down right here, so we're going bearish, okay? You have to look at the market as a whole to tell you where you think the market could potentially go on a long-term basis. And that's typically where, what you, what side of the market you want to trade because that raises the probability of that trade being a winner as opposed to a loser. Okay, not saying it's a bad thing to take a counter trend trade because I'm a scalper. I take counter trend trades all the time. However, if I had to, 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 to pick, I would prefer to take a trade going with the trend as opposed to against the trend. With trading guys, it's better to join them than to try to beat them. Okay, don't try to beat the market. You're never going to beat the market. You want to trade with the market. Move to the beat of the market's drum and you'll guarantee yourself a lot less stress, probably in a lot more wins, okay? So when you're looking at support and resistance, and we're looking at a pair like gold, the reason why I selected gold to go over these examples with you guys is because gold used to be my favorite, favorite pair. And the reason why is because it respected structure very, very well. It respected structure. It gave me very, very clear areas of support and resistance areas. How do you identify support and resistance areas? Well, Charlene, what is support and resistance? Let's go down to the kindergarten ABCs of it. Support, support, guys. When you're supporting something, it means something is, is being held, right? Something is being uh, uh, propped up, right? Support is commonly associated with a floor, right? It's where price has hit a floor. It cannot break through that floor. It's sitting on that floor and price is maintaining above a certain price area. So if you're looking for a support, you're looking for price to remain above a certain area. Now, when we flip it over to resistance, resistance is you're resisting something, something cannot break. So when you have a resistance, that's more correlated with a ceiling. So support for floor, resistance, ceiling. When you have a ceiling, you have a barrier, right? Nothing can break above it. It's kind of holding. So you want price to remain below a certain area. So how do you identify support and resistance areas when you're looking for support? You're looking for an area where price is maintaining above a certain area. When you're looking for resistance, you're looking for an area where price is maintaining below a certain area. It's really that simple, guys. If you guys don't complicate it and you keep it simple, 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 it becomes a little bit more understandable, okay? So let's focus right now on support, okay? We're gonna look at support. now. Once we identify the trend, so right now I'm looking at the market as a whole. Let's go to the one hour time frame, okay? And on the one hour time frame here, I'm seeing that the market was pumping bullish, okay? So if the pump market is pumping bullish, that means that we have several areas of support being maintained because if the market is going up, that means the price is being held above a certain area, right? There's that floor again, and the price is being held above that floor. So we have price uh, support, supporting price, to keep price going bullish. So if I see price is holding right here, and then from there I see a floor here, right? I see a whole bunch of price sitting above this area, right? And then the market begins to create structure, forming higher highs and higher lows. Perfect, perfect. 
every time the market makes a new higher low, that's a newfound area of support, strong area of support, okay? In order for this structure to be maintained, you need these areas of support to be maintained. If price should so happen to break that area, retest it, and then go the other way, now you have what's called the break of structure and price is going to go the other way. All right, that's a whole other topic, though. We don't need to get into that right now. That's just for uh, reference sake, all right? So... If I see prices going bullish, if I've identified the trend and I identified that the trend is going up, now I know I have supports being formed. I know that price needs to respect those certain areas of support for me to look for buys. Okay, if the market is bullish, I want to look for buys. Where is the most highest probability place I can look for a potential buy? At the last strong area of support. That's it. And if you notice, how do you identify strong areas of support where price has tested that area multiple times? Let me show you guys an example. Okay, here. Okay, you have, this is a one hour time frame, right? Let's open this up a little bit so you guys can see here. Right here, these are all one hour candles. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one hour. So for 10 hours, guys, the market held this area right here. Finally broke up above this area, pullback, created a higher high and another pullback and it retested this same area again. Now, does it have to retest the same exact area? No, it's not gonna happen like that all the time. Most likely it will, but for the most part, it won't happen like that every single time. But it, retest, it, it held this area for 10 hours, it broke and started going bullish. Then it came back one more time, retesting it, never breaking the low, and then continued up again, creating another higher high, came down one last time to retest it again, and then finally took off again. So this area right here, very, very, very strong area of support. If you see areas like that, that's areas you want to pay attention to and say, hmm, if price can hold this area, I know for the most, for the most part, I can continue looking for buys. And what you want to do is look for this same exact pattern or of structure happen again. And if you pay attention and you look at the very next area of structure, you see it again, right? I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 hours. The market held this area of support right here, right? And then what did it do? It broke above here, created a higher high, came back to retest it and then took off again. It came back and retested it right here where the same area of support came back and tested it before it took off. This structure right here, this little line and then the break and then the retest and the continuation happened here. Line, break, retest, continuation. The market will continue to repeat itself over and over and over again. But it's up to you to train your eyes to be able to identify those things and be able to predict when you think they're going to happen. Now, when do you know when the breakouts are going to come? You really don't. You kind of have to exercise patience. But as long as you have the trend, the right trend in mind, or the direction of the market in mind, the right one, you're more likely to win the trade. Not only that, if you look at the risk to reward on it, it's awesome. Because if I was to say, hmm, here's, the, here's the, my support here, and I know the market is holding that area of support. I need the market to stay above that area. Well, all I got to do is wait for the market to break this area here, place my stop loss a little bit below that area. And no matter what the market does here, even if I was to lose this trade, what I lost would never compare to the, to the probability of what I could have won on the trade. So risk to reward also plays a part as well. Now, if you're a little bit more risky, you can you know enter at this area and just kind of be patient and wait for the move to take off. But if you'd rather wait for more confirmation, which is the best thing to do, then there's nothing wrong with that either, okay? But the point is, with the risk to reward, if your risk management is on point, you shouldn't have any issue with this trade and waiting for it. So if you've identified the trend and you say the trend is bullish, I know, hey, if the trend is bullish, I need to be looking for strong areas of support where the market has tested multiple times and wait for that initial break wait for it to pull back to retest that area to make sure that it is confirmed to hold because if it doesn't hold what do we have a break of structure but if it does hold we're good to go and this baby is going to take off eventually all right that's support in a nutshell let's look at resistance in a nutshell all right 
Let's take everything off here. Let's go to an area where the market was going bearish. So for now, we're not going to look at the big picture because right now the big picture is, is bullish, but we're looking for sales now because we're looking at resistance. So we're going to focus on an area of the market where the market was going bearish. Okay. So how do we find resistance? Like I said earlier, resistance is what? A ceiling. So price cannot break above that area. We need to find where price is holding an area of resistance, where price is maintaining below a certain area. So I'm looking here and I see that price was holding right here. I see a bunch of resistance here where price is pushing down, 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 finally broke and then took off. So we're going to focus on this area right here for now. All right, perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place a couple of zones right at my areas of resistance, kind of like that. Okay. And then I'm going to break it down. All right. Same thing I did for the cells. I look for multiple touches. Okay. So right here, we have an area that had a couple touches here, but not as much as this area right here. I would say this area is a whole lot stronger than this area up here because look at how many touches we have here. I can count all these candles here, but that's going to be a lot of candles, right? So for several, several, several hours, price was not able to break above this area to uh, go bullish until this time here, which was 8 o'clock in the morning, where you have New York session volume. Before that, the pr price could not break this area and price continued to break bearish so what do we do here simple we see that price is holding this area here all i'm doing is looking for the market to what Re to break the area come down retest it and come back down you have multiple testing here so there you had multiple opportunities but you would have had to wait for price to come back to your area of resistance now let's also look at what risk to reward risk reward Look at how much you could have won on this trade and how much you could have lost. Every time price came up here, it couldn't maintain. It always came back down. So if you wait for price to come back to your major area of resistance, which is the area where you have multiple touches, you're more likely to win the trade. The probability is much higher and it's more on your side. Okay, so all you got to do, guys, is come to the charts, identify your strong areas of support and resistance after you've identified the trend and then wait. Wait for that break, wait for that retest, wait for that confirmation, wait for those added confirmations to tell you where to take the trade, okay? I'm not going to go over a bunch of examples for you guys, because so this is supposed to be a quick, quick series uh, on each topic, so I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. So if you need help, please rewind the video, re-watch it, and try your best to take notes and to understand what it is that I'm going over. Most important thing is to identify the trend. Once you identify the trend, identify your uh, major areas of support and resistance. How do you know if it's a major area? How many times does it tap that area before it actually respects it, breaks up, breaks out, whatever it is that it does at that zone? And that's pretty much it. Once you have that down at this point, it's a matter of waiting for your confirmations. Everybody has different entry confirmations, so I can't tell you exactly what to look for because I don't know your exact trading styles and what it is you look for. However, based on how I trade, you give me that major zone, I'm waiting for price to come back to that zone if it's left it. Give me that retest, hold that area, and then after it's done, bye-bye, bye-bye. Game over, and that's it. It's very simple, guys. It's, I don't like to use the word easy, but it's very, very simple to understand this concept if you practice it enough. I can't tell you guys enough to get on the charts and practice chart time. Uh, uh, get your eyes acclimated to finding these certain things and look for them on different time frames also. On this example, I stayed on the one hour because it's a little bit more condensed, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot less noise, but you can find them on every time frame. You can find it on the daily, the four hour, the five minute, even the one minute, if you look close enough, okay? Now, depending on what time frame you choose to enter on, that can also play a major part as well, because like I said, the same way you look for entries on one time frame, you can look for entries differently on another time frame because every time frame kind of moves you know, to its own, uh, its own rhythm. So based on how you see the charts is how you're going to be able to look for a setup. All right, guys. So that's support and resistance in a nutshell. All right. Any questions or comments, please feel free to drop them uh, in the comment section below. Uh, don't forget to like the video. And uh, that's this part of the of the beginners, I guess, mini series. All right. I'm going to hop on over and do another one. And please be sure to watch all of them, because if you're a beginner trader, if you're still struggling, if uh, there's certain aspects that you're just not understanding, be it um, stop losses, entries, uh, breakdowns, and whatnot, uh, this little mini masterclass should be a big help for that. All right. So as always, guys, it's your favorite female trader, Charlene FX. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the next series. Peace and love.